Why does the blessing of God not manifest in those who appear sold out for him? The blessings of Christ do not always come to fruition or come upon those who appear to be sold out for him. Because many people are talkers, but not many people are doers. And it's easy to talk about the things of the faith. It's much more difficult to live in obedience and to live out the faith and to do what God is commanding us to do. Because anyone can give verbal uh you know, uh, can speak out what is God's truth. Anyone can give mental assent and believe God's truth, but it's entirely different to enact out that truth and to act upon what one knows. That is the most difficult thing. And in this age of information overload, we see that time and time again. We store up wonderful tips and and certain uh, steps on how to do certain things, but if we're not enacting out what we have learned, then it's merely just words and it's just uh, merely head knowledge but it's not heart transformation that's the true faith for those who truly believe that jesus christ is lord and savior and repent of their sins they go through a renewal a transformed heart they re they get their mind renewed they become changed and then they enact out on what they know is god's word and they desire to share the love of christ to spread the good news to stand boldly for god's word and to just allow the fruits of the spirit to be manifested within them and so we need to understand that when someone appears to be sold out for christ but god's blessing is not upon them there is most likely um, something going on predominantly it's hidden sin um, those who do not have the blessing of god upon them uh, even if they're born again but they're living in sin they're living behind you know a screen of watching pornography all the time but they aren't um, necessarily repentant of that they're not willing to say that that's a struggle well god's blessing is not going to be upon that person and that's not to say that that person isn't being convicted but if they keep suppressing that conviction i mean ultimately they'll get to a standpoint of a divine ultimatum where god will say i've been long suffering and patient with you this has been going on for decades i've convicted you you've continued to neglect my conviction do you truly want to follow me and then there's that divine ultimatum but what we're talking about is for those who are born again but are being convicted and uh, sometimes are sorrowful over their sin, other times are not. God's blessing cannot work through a vessel that is living in sin and is not desiring to change. And so those who truly have the Holy Spirit, they're going to be convicted by sin. But those who truly desire to live for God, not simply accept and receive God, but to live for God and return themselves to God, they are going to want to not to get they're going to want to get away from sin and not live in sin but they're going to want to be sanctified and want to walk down the road in which god is paved and in which god is calling them to so may we know that what we see is not always what is truly happening there's usually stuff going on in the background if someone is is not being blessed but they appear sold out for them it's usually due to hidden sin and god will never bless someone with hidden sin um, because the reality is is that person is not prepared or ready to reach that next level so to speak for god because they're still partaking with demons which we cannot do we cannot um sit at the table of demons and at the table of god and expect you know um you know, uh, God to continue to move, we're going to have to pick one or the other. And that doesn't mean that, um, you know, uh, unbelievers never receive a little bit of God in the sense of hearing his word and whatnot, but unbelievers live with demons. And that's not to say that those living for God are never going to partake in the way of devils because we're all works in progress. We're going to have stumbles and failings and shortcomings and falls into sin. But when that happens, we immediately repent and we get out of that and we continue down the path um, that Christ is leading us down because we know that Proverbs says the righteous man falls seven times but gets back up again. We know from 1 John that anyone who says that they are without sin, they are a liar and the truth is not in them. So we need to recognize that there's a difference between uh, falling into sin and living in sin. And usually when God's blessing is not upon a person who appears sold out for that person, there is a hidden habitual state of sin that someone is living in that they are either unrepentant of or they are not desiring to get away from or they are currently struggling with and God's not going to give that person a bigger ministry or whatever that may be because that person is not um, 
they have not reached the point in which God desires them to be in order for his blessing to be upon that person. So may we look at our lives, may we assess ourselves where we're at, and may we um, just continue to grow in righteousness and holiness, not in our own strength, but in the power of the Holy Spirit, because we can only live the Christian life by the power of the Holy Spirit. And God knows this, and we should know this too. And when we become dependent upon God, God will move and we will see his blessings flow. This is not at all financial gain, but we will see his blessings flow by spiritual means, by transformations within certain things. We'll be uh, brought up into the next level to wherever God is bringing us. And we will continue to get away from what once used to rule us because we are now living uh, for a higher purpose and a higher calling.